able to say the right thing, and that's great. So that's my assessment of Artie. I think the thing that's hard for, for people to understand is, you know, he didn't get that way in a week. And there's sort of this expectation by people in the audience because they haven't seen him in a while and, and that, you know, that he can get better just like that. But what happened to him was, you know, I think a pretty heavy thing. And uh, so I think he needs to be in the right place before he can even think about being in the right place with us. You know, I think he needs to make sure he's in a good place because I spoke to him a couple of times and he's, he's up, he's up, you're down a little bit, you're up, you're up, you're down a little bit, you know, just like anybody else. So I think if he gets that all worked out, then we can have the discussion about whether he can come back in. I think, oh, that answers it. Uh, second row, then I get you the first row. We, we all know that there's some uncertainty uh, with what's going to happen with how we're come, coming up. As a producer, are you, um, are you nervous? Yeah. About <laughs> I'm very nervous. I, tell, I still have a mortgage, and I, you know, I think that, uh, listen, I make a great living. Don't get me wrong, I make a great living. But there was a long period of time when I was in the show where I made a good living, but not the kind of living that a producer should make. So it's only really since I got to Sirius that, that I'm doing well. And I remember thinking, you know, when I was younger, if somebody's on TV, they gotta be rich. And then I met Tiny Tim, and I realized that's not the case at all. And Howard and I used to joke around all the time, Tiny Tim, Tiny Tim was the worst case scenario. He's famous, and he's broke. And so, um, I, there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, all the guys in the office ask me about it all the time. Um, I don't really ask Howard about it, because I know he won't answer me. Um, he, except to say, hey, you know, I'm working on it. But if I said, hey, man, you know, can you name what's going on? He wouldn't tell me. And he, he as much said that on the air this week. Up front. Well, it's already been established. The show's going on, right? That's true. Okay, so but where? You, and how? Yeah, but I mean, you're going to be there. The yeah, but, the, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot more questions to that. So one of the questions is, if the show goes on, um, even if we had to go someplace else tomorrow to build a new studio or to get that all squared away, it doesn't happen in a week. So does that mean that Howard takes a month off? Does that mean Howard takes three months off? If we take six months off while we get it ready, does that mean everybody's compensated? Or does that mean everyone's on their own for six months and people go to other places, are they gonna be available when we get back? It, it opens up a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> should, what's the percentage of Howard's income that he's gonna state series in your opinion? 50-50. Really? It really is 50-50. Do you think Howard's being a dick by doing that? Um, I, I, no, I've been asked that question before, like, hey, Howard, always it to you guys, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think he understands that. And like, I, like I sort of put my trust in him in that, that passage I read 27 years ago, I trust him to, you know, I trust him to do the right thing for us. But yeah, I wish, I wish we knew. I mean, a lot of people are nervous, but I've been with him a long time, and I don't think he'd hang us out to dry. Yeah. Um, why did you give Howard that tape? Because he paid me. <laughs> Well, yeah, the kitchen's long gone. Right? I, did, I, did, I did a remodel on my kitchen, which is a house ago. Uh, but at the time, I, at the time, twenty-three thousand dollars was a lot of money to me. But, the, but here's the other thing too. The, the other thing you have to understand is, I knew I had the tape, and I had never seen that tape since I had made it. So when I agreed to do it, it in my mind. It didn't seem so bad. When I got home that night and I found the tape, I was like, oh, shit. You know, and, and probably had I seen it recently, I would have never given the tape. So the answer to your question was, I, I wasn't really as familiar with it as I am now. Yeah. How did that guy come across the tape? Well, he didn't. The guy didn't come across him. I owned the tape. And I actually sort of explained it in the book. But the guy that called? He knew about it because he was my, my ex-girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. So he knew about the tape. And, uh, there's a funny story that goes with that. Uh, the guy calls on the air, and uh, he goes, he goes, Howard, uh, there's a tape. And I, I feel the hair on the back of my head, too. <laughs> because I know what he means. I know what he means by the tape. So we talk about it on the air. I say there's not enough money in the world. Howard puts up five grand. Rob puts up five grand. Alyssa to Miami puts up ten grand. Jackie and Fred put up a grand each. All of a sudden I blink, and it's 23 grand. Suddenly there's enough money in the world. <laughs> So I get off the air and I decide, uh, well, you know, just whenever wacky stuff happens, I, I call my wife just to make sure everything's cool, you know. And, and I know my wife all enough to know she, she doesn't care about crap like that. Yeah. You know, she'll be like, you dated her for eight years, I don't care. So I call my wife up and I'm getting the cold shoulder, big time, which just doesn't sound right. So I keep asking her questions and I'm getting like one word answers. And I can tell she's pissed and it just doesn't seem like her to be pissed at something like this. So I said to her, uh, what's the matter? She goes, well, what do you think is the matter? That's how that works, by the way. Uh, my wife asks, 
answers a question with a question. So if, if something's bad on the air that day, I try to sniff it out and I go, listen to the show today? And she goes, should I have? <laughs> and that's the dance we do. So, uh, so, so uh, finally I say, what's wrong? And she goes, well, what do you think is wrong? And I said, well, what do you think this is? And she goes, why don't you say what this is? I go, tell me what you think it is. And she goes, I go, it's a tape. And she goes, yes, it's a sex tape. And what happened was one of her friends who had heard like a, a quarter second of the show, that they heard there was a tape, thought that's what it was, and called my wife and go, oh, you're afraid there's a sex tape. So my wife was running around for an hour thinking that I was cavalierly taking money to show a sex tape to the whole world. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's been, listen, it's certainly given me uh, an odd identity, uh, but I think I still have, I, I, I don't know what the, the, they call me Gary, doesn't really work as well. <laughs> and, uh, and I do love, in, in the book, I have a list of my top 10 favorite Baba Booey shout outs, uh, you know, from Family Guy to 30 Rock to SNL, but if, if I had to ask you, what's the number one Baba Booey shout out, what would you say it is? Robert Higgins. Robert Higgins is correct. Yeah. When, uh, when, uh, uh, the O.J. car chase, Peter Jennings, live TV, the whole world is watching. And he says, and I'll pop a boy to y'all. <laughs> and that was my favorite. It's so great because I found that on YouTube, and I explained it to my younger son, and we watched it, and he laughed his ass off. I just thought that was right. Get back there. Uh, at what age would you let your son listen to the show? Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, at what age would I let my kids listen to the show? My, I have a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old. Uh, my 16-year-old, he doesn't really seem interested in listening to the show. You know, him and his buddies get up every day. All they want to do is go watch ESPN and check the fantasy football scores and talk sports, sports, sports. So, you know, and they all download music to their iPods. My younger son is very fascinated with it. We won't even let him read the book, but he's going to read the book. I know, I'm not stupid. I'm just not going to give it to him to read. He's going to find it and going to read it. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I don't think it's appropriate for him to listen to the show. But I sort of, I try to um, sort of, Wet his appetite by letting him in on the parts of the show that I can let him listen to. So I'll bring home Richard and Sal phone calls that are clean and really funny. And he thinks that's right. He loves Benji. Um, I let him listen to. He was fascinated when we were when we did the best of K Rock. When we got to Sirius, we started doing all of that. I let him listen to High Pitch. Eric is afraid of fish. And he just thinks that's a, he goes, "Can I download that to my iPhone?" So I try to give him a little bit, I show him, you know, I, I, I show him that we interviewed, you know, Governor Pataki and Senator D'Amato. I don't tell him about the Tiger Woods Mistress Beauty Pageant. <laughs> yeah, the back there. Uh, yeah, uh, what's the worst way to show is negative emotion? Like, what's the worst way to show negative emotion? Um, probably, I'm trying to think of the worst way it's negatively impacted my private life. Uh, probably there are a couple things I did on the air when I first got married that I didn't realize a new wife would want her husband to be doing on the air, and you come home, like maybe, maybe just as an example, you know, maybe the show went out to Los Angeles and I didn't know that my wife didn't want me to play butt bongo on a stranger's <laughs> and so that was a little upsetting, but, um, I, I, I would say that I, you know, there's very few negatives involved with the show, and the positives far outweigh it. And I've never, I don't feel like I've ever been denied anything because someone was an Imus fan. You know what I mean? I feel like, I feel like Stern fans are everywhere, and they outnumber everybody. You know what I mean? You've been fired numerous times over the years. Yes, I have. Have you ever really feared being fired? No, but I, but, but I've never really feared being fired. But that's not to say that when we were fighting with each other, we're not really, he's not really mad at me or I'm not really mad at him. And, um, and it is this sort of odd thing because we will be brutal to each other on the air and yell at each other and he's like, you're an idiot, you're a moron. And I'm like, screw you, screw you. And then he goes, I'll be back after this commercial break. And then I have to walk in and go, okay, up next is Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but I think that part of why the relationship works is we both, I mean, he turns it off too. We both sort of understand, okay, I was mad at you on the air, and that's partly for the air. Maybe I really am mad, and maybe I'll continue to be mad, but we both have a job to do. So that's another sort of dysfunctional way that we operate that works out well for the show. All right, right in the corner. Uh, how much of a pain in the ass is it to deal with people like Eric and Lizzie? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, this, is one of those, this is one of those places 
where I sort of 